as as I have been mentioning, we are very much committed to the U.S. There's a fair amount of concern, and some of our customers have this concern. You know, there's a lot of utility scale projects going in, gigawatts, thousands of modules. What happens in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years down the road? Do these modules all end up in a landfill? And if that happens, you know, we, we're really creating a major problem for exactly the next generation. Usa's vision from the sustainability standpoint is to become or be part of the circular economy. And what that means is the product which has been used and served its lifespan now needs to be properly or gets properly recycled. And in an ideal world, that properly recycled product, you are able to extract the raw materials and those raw materials are used to make the product in the same industry. Okay, you are making a product which will create the green energy or the clean energy. But while making the product, how much are you emitting carbon to the environment? Mm -hmm. That's the question everyone needs to understand because if you are if you are basically throwing out a lot in the air of harmful substances, then the output is not making sense. Welcome to the Solar Energy Channel. I'm Larry, and today I'm joined by Harsh Galia. Harsh is the Senior Product Manager for QCells North America, and we're going to do a deep dive into QCells manufacturing plans in the U.S., their product offering, the future of solar panel technology, and much more. So thanks, Harsh. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Larry, for having me. Sure. Yeah, Harsh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your role at, at QCells, your background, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So um, right now I'm working as senior product manager uh, and uh, mainly responsible for our PV, pod, PV modules at this point. Uh, our team uh, uh, in this Northern America entity, we are the technical uh, support team, which basically helps all our sales folks with their day-to-day uh, request on the technical side mainly uh, when it comes to any product related questions the certifications the compatibility and everything we are the ones who are helping our awesome sales team to get the job done on that part also along with that uh, our team works very closely to uh, develop the new products and introduce the new products in the US with our R&D folks in Germany and also with our uh, colleagues in Korea. So it's a very uh, dynamic nature of work which we do on a day-to-day basis. So never a dull day at any point. Mm -hmm. uh, keeps you very busy. That's the best part I like about our work here. And at the same time, we are moving towards a much cleaner energy uh, goal of the world. So I'm glad to be here. Good. Excellent. Yeah. And my next question for you is going to be, what's your favorite aspect of being involved in the solar industry? But it looks like you've kind of answered that already. You know, there's never a dull moment, is there? No. And uh, we're moving towards a cleaner environment. Exactly. So th that's the part which has uh, driven all of us over here in QSense more and more every day that we are contributing towards making uh, our Mother Earth more and more livable with less, less stress all around. So, yes, I know uh, the work stress is different, but in general, when you are looking for a better life, I think clean energy is the way to go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And QCells is a big part of that. So tell us a little bit more about QCells. You know, what's the history of the company, company structure, manufacturing locations? I mean, you guys have a ton going on right now. So bring us <laughs> up to speed with what's happening at QCells. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, many exciting things ongoing in parallel at QCells. Uh, QCells as a company was started back in uh, 2010. Uh, it was first, it, it, it started in Germany and then Hanwa came on board and it became a part of the Hanwa group. Hanwa group is basically the uh, largest conglomerate, uh, seventh, I think, uh, I think the, the numbers keep on going up and down, but it is part of global 500 group. 
So uh, what I mean to say by that is uh, we have enough financial backing parent. So in the solar business, if you have been long enough, you know how much that helps. Uh, it does help a lot when you have such a, a financially strong partner or a parent company. So you are able to do all these new developments, bring these new technologies and everything to actual real world applications. Um, <clears throat> talking about manufacturing announcements and everything, I guess you have already seen and pre pretty much our marketing team has done an awesome job of sharing the details about how we have in, like invested $2.5 billion over here. Even before the IRA was announced, we were uh, we already we already had started our factory in Dalton, uh, Georgia. At that point, uh, I think it was uh, 2019 when the factory started in the month of uh, June or July. I believe we had started. Uh, we had done the public announcement that it is fully functional, but the factory had started in first quarter itself at that point. Um, <clears throat> I know this part very well because I was one of the employees who was part of the ramp up over there. So it was very exciting times to be part of that uh, phase of Q cells. It was a factory of 1.7 gigawatt capacity back then. And uh, by the end of last year, like in the end of 2023, that factory got expanded and now we have uh, 5.1 gigawatt capacity over there. So it's a pretty big plant now. And at the same time, we are now uh, gearing up to uh, ramp up our Carters will Georgia location, which will be another 3.3 gigawatt uh, capacity added. The interesting part about Carters will Georgia, though, is it is one of the first, I think not one of the first, it will be the first vertically integrated solar uh, manufacturing plant. So that the Cartersville location will have ingots, wafers, cells, and modules all together under one roof. And that will be something which we all are very excited and looking forward to. Um, all. <clears throat> so yeah, those are the US locations. We do have our locations in Korea, which are right now on go like operational. So also a little correction uh, before I said that the Q cells was in 2010. Actually, it was founded in 1999. And I think around 2010 was when Hanwa came on board. So that's a small correction from my side. Sorry for that. Yeah, no, that's good. And if I understand correctly, Q cells was a German manufacturer of PV modules and then purchased by, by Hanwa and became Hanwa Q cells. I mean, you touched on a couple of things we really like about Q cells. One is, you know, the bankability. I mean, that's like you said, Arsh, that's massive in this industry. Yeah. We've had module manufacturers go out of business. Um, mm -hmm. so that, that's huge. You also touched a lot on uh, domestic manufacturing, which is another thing that for us right now is becoming a bigger and bigger thing. So you mentioned, you know, you were shifting the U.S. manufacturing even before the IRA. How? What is uh, Q cells doing now about the domestic content? We're going to have something there on that at some point. <clears throat> I, I know not <clears throat> out yet as far as the requirements. What, what does that look like? Yeah, as you rightly said, the we all are patiently waiting for the government to give us clear guidelines on that. And hopefully by the end of April, May, we are able to hear something from them. But we are doing a lot of things in the background. Uh, which I'm not sure if it will be helpful for all of us to listen right now. We shall wait for a grand announcement coming soon on our way. Cool. Sounds good. Well, we'll look forward to that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hope that, uh, hope to hear something on that soon because that's, I mean, obviously the, the government has to tell you how to do it first. Uh, yeah. but I think, I think the reality, what I'm hearing is that you guys are preparing for that. You don't know exactly, exactly. what you're doing but you're trying to be prepared when that comes. Yeah, there are a few options. We are looking in parallel. Of course, we don't know which one to go for until we see the guidelines. Uh, but definitely, uh, we are very much committed to it. And hence, that's the reason we have this vertically integrated manufacturing plant in place. 
uh, of course there will be few other materials which will be coming into account and everything but again uh, that's something with when the as we go forward with this uh, whole ira journey uh, we will have uh, we will share more and more good good yeah i like how you said that it's definitely been an ira journey for all of us <laughs> yeah it's it's a good thing but we need to just we still need to sort it out yet yeah good yeah. excellent so uh, go ahead Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt, but just uh, wanted to understand when you said that it's very important for you guys to have this DCA content, would you help us uh, expand a little bit on that? Like how your customers are, like the customers you serve to in different regions are looking forward to this and what's the great part about it like that you feel from your side? Great, great question. I mean, that that's something that I think the industry, a question that the industry struggled with for a long time. Um, so I've been in the industry since 2010 and, you know, people would ask for us made products. And for a lot of the time that we've been in business here, the answer was there's not really much out there, Yeah. you know, and if it's out there, it's a lot more expensive than the domestic product. So it wasn't really viable. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're still getting customers asking for that. I think our customers like that. Um, I think our customers also really like the 10% the potential ITC adder. That's going to be huge. But I think, I think it's even more than that. I think it's just understanding that we're able to make these products here in the U.S. with our own technology and our own people. And I think there's concern about having China have too much of the manufacturing capacity. So I think all of that is going to help help our customers and really help the industry move forward as we have more and more us manufacturing yeah well said i mean the i think at this point uh, in general everyone is concerned about china's china's domination in this industry and whatever we can contribute everyone would be willing to contribute as much as we can yeah absolutely yeah yeah i think this is huge um so one other question along that line is so as you look out 10 years 20 years 30 years i, I know that nobody knows what's going to happen we yeah. couldn't even predict that this was that we were going to be here two years ago yeah so nobody knows what's going to happen but what's q cells vision as you look out 10 20 30 years and you think about some things like hey p models are going to have to be recycled you know right. the industry is going to change <clears throat> at some point there might be less installation more o and m um, but there's always going to be need for more PV modules. What do you, how do you guys think through all that? What do you see looking out a, a couple of decades? Um, that's a very loaded question. I would like to break it down in few parts and answer it. Uh, so, but a great question to understand how the Q cells vision is uh, at this moment and what we are, what our vision is to become a solution provider uh, first and the foremost and the the, the, the logic behind that or the vision behind that is uh, many times we have seen our installer partners struggle to go through different, uh, different companies for different parts of the solar system. Uh, we, as an installer, you yourself would like uh, to have just one company to deal with rather than seven different companies to deal Absolutely. with. Yeah, let's uh, do it. <laughs> yeah, so that is one in the form, one of the foremost vision we have in Q cells to become a solution provider. Uh, that will go a long way, and of course, that it's a huge journey to take on, a uh, huge uh, mental as well to bear. But at the same time, I feel it's a very exciting way of looking of looking at things because we all know. Without solar panels, this whole solar solution doesn't work. So solar panel will be the heart of it, the, the main, main heart of it. But there are many other things which we need to figure out. Now, coming to just the solar panel part of it, which I am involved with very much in my role, we are looking at introducing different technologies as the industry is moving forward. So we already introduced uh, towards the end of last year in, our third, in the last quarter, our version of the the Qtron modules. Now the Qtron modules are the, as the industry has been talking a lot about these days about the top core modules. Qtron modules are 
made with the solar cells, which is which is our version of the n-type top core. So that is one of the things which uh, is intriguing for me as a part of QCells of how soon we are able to launch the new technology and adapt to it. At the same time, as we are moving forward, we are not forgetting about the current generation of modules which is going on. So we do have our QPIC lines which are ongoing and we still feel like there is a lot of need for the world uh, or for the US to even adopt the P-type perk. Many times with these new technologies, we have seen that people are hesitant because you don't have too much of field data at this moment. And in the industry, the experts, they always want to be double, double, triple sure when it comes to the field data part. Because at the end, I feel like from my personal perspective, reliability of the product is important rather than um, other factors. The other factors do contribute a lot, but the reliability part is the most important one and where Q cells at like at Q cells, we do have this QCPV program. Now this QCPV is quality controlled PV program. Uh, this is uh, basically a TUV Ryland program in which Q cells is one, the first one to adopt it. And the way this program works is in three parts. The first part is related to the IC standard extended reliability testing which we all are very familiar with at this point and what it is trying to do is it is trying to simulate the product and the performance warranties which have been mentioned on the data sheets uh, are actually uh, going to happen in reality is your product able to survive for 25 years or 30 years or whatever is being said in the data sheet so that is the part which QCPV part one is helping us do that. Uh, also at the second, uh, uh, the second portion to it is where we are very much uh, wanting to have this program adopted more and more by different uh, companies as well. But QCells believes a lot in it is production monitoring. So what it does is every day you are making so many thousand panels on a daily basis but the extended reliability testing is only done on some handful of panels and then the entire production is not monitored you have internal standards to some extent or to a great extent but it's not that regular that every day or every week or every month your product is being keeps on getting tested so that is the part which is production monitoring which which we like about the QCPV and we believe in. And that is how we all uh, in QCells are able to mention that our product is very much reliable because we are able to on a on very regular basis do keep up with this uh, testing uh, to make sure that the product which is being manufactured at a very high scale uh, in large numbers is reliable. And then the third portion to it is where you have uh, material audits uh, and all coming into play. So what that does is uh, every time we are uh, we are trying to introduce new material as part of our BOM, we are also doing extensive audits with the suppliers. And at the same time, having those audits done for the current bill of material as well. And that is the part which helps us and the suppliers keep focused and committed to each other. So uh, all in all with QCPV, we are able to, uh, with TUV's QCPV program, we are able to say that our product is very reliable and that is the key part, right? When it comes to telling that, hey, hey, why QCells? Well, we are bankable and we are reliable. That's the that's the message we want to say to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think what I'm hearing is, you know, you're trying to monitor every module, not just a few of them. You're trying to make sure that they're all good to go. And then the other piece of it is when you're bringing in new materials, you're really doing a ton of testing ahead of time, 
to make sure that everything is working the way it should uh, yeah. when you go to manufacture and get them out there. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about that. So, I mean, one of the questions that we get from time to time is, okay, so Q cells has a 30 year, you know, production warranty on, on their bifacial module. Q cells hasn't even been around 30 years. How do they know it's going to last 30 years? You know, so yeah. what do you do, you know, do you do like accelerated testing of some kind to see how that works or, or what, what are you doing along that line? Exactly. So that's the part which I was mentioning you as part one. This is, uh, there are specified IEC standard testing, which basically is the accelerated climate chamber test, uh, where you are trying to simulate this 30 year environment in the climate chamber in the testing lab. And what QCells does, uh, as since we believe in this QCPV program a lot, the QCPV program is even more uh, going above and beyond these IEC standards. So we are not, not just testing it just for what standards is, but we are testing it beyond what standard stipulates. So for example, the damp heat testing is one of the test sequences, which is part of the IEC standard. Um, and it is mentioned that you should be doing 2000 hours of it. But for it with in Q cells, uh, with the help of TUV QCPV program, we are pushing it to 3000 hours itself. Wow. So that is just one example, but uh, I want to say that it is above and beyond what is the norm or the requirement out there. And yes, you are exactly right. You are bang on target. No company, I mean, not no company, but I would say most of the companies in the world have not been around for that long, but you still are guaranteeing that level. So what's the logic behind it? And that's where this field data also comes into the play. And that's what the hesitance is in the industry. Most of the time, not just you, but many of the people have this hesitance. And along with the testing, which we do the accelerated testing and everything, we also do a lot of field field testing. So most of our panels, which have been, uh, whatever we are making we are installing in different locations to make sure it is in different weather conditions and we keep on monitoring them i know it like you cannot fast forward the time and see but that's the only way we could think of would make logical sense that you do the lab testing and then you also do the in real life testing and see where you end up mm -hmm. yeah that's i guess that's the best you can do you can't get out 30 years so you got it you have yeah. to look at it in some way Good. Uh, you mentioned two different lines of modules, the Q-Peak and the Q-Tron. Uh, give us a few more details on those two lines um, as far as efficiency, aesthetics, price point. You know, what, do, what are you looking at with those two different lines? How do they differ and, and what are they good for? Right. So Q-Peak, Q-Tron. Uh, when it comes to Q-Peak, uh, the, this is uh, the... This product line is basically based on our version of the PERC technology. So P-type PERC uh, technology version of Q-cells, uh, all the modules which will be basically made in that technology are the Q-peak series modules. <clears throat> uh, this, the PERC technology I feel at this point everyone is very much comfortable in the industry with because you have a lot of field data the technology has been around since 2011, 2012 timeframe on a commercial scale. And even before that in the research stage. So pretty much everyone at this point is, is knowing about this work technology. And hence uh, the QPIC series is what uh, is going to be around for at least a couple of more years while the transition is happening from this technology to the end type top con version of ours called as quantum neo uh, the quantum neo is for the cells we call that uh, the n type top con version of q cells cells are the quantum neo cells and these quantum neo cells are used for the qtron product series uh, right now we have uh, for the Q-Peak series, I think uh, we have our G10s and G11s in the market available. Uh, 
we do have the bifacial glass on glass product and we do have the uh, monofacial uh, with the bifacial cells uh, <clears throat> for the residential segment as well. Uh, and the same way, we have the offering of the Qtron, which is in the glass to glass and the uh, glass to foil or what do you say, the back sheet uh, for the residential segment at this moment. Uh, you can find all this information on our website, which our marketing team is doing a great job of having everything over there at as a one-stop shop. Uh, the, regarding the pricing part, I think uh, that is something which I am not fully uh, involved in because my role in the company has been more on the technical side of things. But uh, I think at this point, I am very much aware that all the major distributors out there, like CD Greentex, the Vescos and the Bevas and everyone does carry our product. So you should be able to uh, readily buy it from those distributors. <clears throat> yeah, I think yeah. Uh, that's the key part, yeah. So, so generally the Qtron is getting more efficient and it's more made for residential? <clears throat> Not um, necessarily, culture. so. There is a Qtron uh, line commercial as well? Yes, the Qtron commercial line is also, uh, right as we speak, it is being manufactured in our Dalton factory. So the Qtron commercial product will uh, is also available at our distributors currently. Uh, the key difference between the two product series at this moment is because your cells are so efficient, the quantum neo cells, you are able to pack more power, like more power in a product with a small footprint. That's the key understanding we all need to have. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you will see that the Q-Peak residential products we have right now in the market are around 405 and 4, 410 watt peak power. And the Qtrons uh, we have, the residential segment ones, are 425s and 430s. So that's how you are able to pack more power in a small footage compared to the previous generation. And that's why the development and the improvement keeps on happening, right? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and the, on the commercial side, you have these... Uh, 590 watt panels on the Q peaks. And then when it comes to the Qtrons, you will have four, six, 625s and 630s. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So that's how you are able to see the difference uh, between the two product series. And the whole reason is behind that is because of the more efficient cells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing I noticed is that the Qtron has a higher. A production guarantee percentage at the end of the the warranty than the QP has, and so I guess there's an expectation that that module is going to degrade at a lower rate. Is that that is correct? That is correct. So uh, what what we have understood from our testing and all the uh, all all the internal development efforts which have been made, that our Qtron modules will be degrading at much lower rate. So at the end of 25 year, 30 year mark, you will be able to see a much higher performing product compared to the previous technology. So uh, if I remember correctly, our Qtron series uh, usually degrades around 0.3% per year. Hmm. And the Q peak series uh, is around 0.5% per year after the first year degradation. Mm -hmm. The first year degradation is completely different ballpark because you need some time to stabilize. The cells are stabilizing in the environment and everything. But from second year onwards, this is what uh, the difference comes into the play. That's where the difference comes into the play. Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty attractive. I mean, we're showing our customers a cash flow based on a half a percent degradation per year. And that gets you to what, 85% or so at 30 years, Correct. but if you can show 90% or even 95% at 25, 30 years, that's significant. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think uh, by the end of 25, you should be around 90.5 something and wow. probably around 87, 88 by 30 or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then 
I mean, that, that makes me think, well, if that's the case at 30 years, they might last another 30 years after that. You know, what's to keep them from going on beyond that? And I guess nobody knows at this point, I guess. Yeah, so that's the part. Like, as an industry, we are all evolving. Even mm -hmm. though, let's say, for example, we are able to say that, hey, this product or any manufacturer is saying this product will last 35, 40, 45, whatever the number is out there, the bigger number. The, the technology has been evolving so rapidly at this uh, in this current time in the solar world that I remember myself in 2019, we had commercial products which were around 400 watts which were and now you have the commercial products which are around 630 watts so and this is just in the span of like four to five years we are talking about more than 30 35 years do you think this these products will be even that much relevant at that point is the question yeah. we all need to understand and in the industry sure yeah it's a fair question it's a fair question uh, but let's talk about that just a bit. So you're moving towards kind of like a 595 uh, series and then like a 620 series module on the top end. Um, and then residential, you know, you're looking at upwards of 440 watts. Uh, project that out just a bit. I know one of the, the challenges that we've had as a small commercial installer, um, so we do some more utility scale type projects where you're you know, 550, 650, those larger yep. models are, are great. But when we're working on a rooftop, you know, we'd prefer to have something more in maybe the 450 to 470 range, kind of like the old 72 cell modules of, right. of past years. Is Q cells looking at something like that? Or are you just going to keep pushing bigger into the, the larger module space? So Q cells is uh, offering, uh, like, is offering the products for all the three markets, definitely residential, commercial, and utility. So definitely there is there are some products which are being discussed right now, which we will try to keep in that 500 sweet spot, which is more helpful for our commercial installer partners. Uh, it is in the it is under discussion right now. Uh, sometimes uh, it's a matter of not just development, but also if this product will be able to attain certain amount of volume in the market right mm -hmm. and that that dilemma sometimes takes over your product uh, launch time frame as well mm -hmm. so th there are some variants some some key things which are being thought out right now uh, the product development will happen post those uh, key things understanding yes mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. I mean, you have to make what the industry wants and you have to make it at the price point that makes sense. And I think that's maybe exactly. the, other, the other part of it that some of these larger modules, you know, really starts to help with with price point as you get larger. And that's that's a big consideration. I mean, I'm sure as a manufacturer that that's critical. to you. <laughs> yeah. On the manufacturing side, uh, every single penny you are able to save is a big thing. So yeah. Uh, the decisions like these are very critical and at the scale which we are operating now it's uh, even more critical because now like if you look at it by the end of this year we will have 8.4 gigawatt of capacity just in us wow and when that happens you have to be very careful in what products you need to manufacture because if you are going for a product which is not widely accepted in the market let's say for an example, you just cannot switch from one product to another because mm -hmm. now you have so many other things to consider, uh, like downtimes ma mainly. When it comes to manufacturing, the biggest, biggest dilemma or the biggest struggle we all have in the manufacturing side of things is how to reduce the downtimes and the changeovers and everything don't help, don't help this. Mm -hmm. So yeah some interesting and new challenges to face as we go forward and grow but i'm pretty confident that with the q cells uh, way of developing new technology and also accommodating the customer feedbacks from time to time helps us develop a better product which is mm -hmm. acceptable in the market yeah 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 a lot of things to think about as a manufacturer I and mean, i think 
in, in my opinion, you guys are positioned really well. You know, you've, got the, you've got the U.S. manufacturer. It's already up and running. Plus, you know, you're looking at other parts of the supply chain. Uh, maybe maybe just touch on that a bit. You're looking at, at cells, wafers. How, how far does that go? So uh, definitely we have announced the like the ingot, the wafer, and the cells part at this point. Now, the other key elements of the, uh, also the other thing to mention over here, Hanwa Group has another entity or another company called as Hanwa Advanced Material. And those folks will also be, uh, those folks are also starting their factory in Georgia itself, close to our Cardassville location. So the encapsulant and the back sheet will also be sort of US made and uh, coming from their side. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing which we are, we have checkbox like, okay, this is also uh, adding to our domestic content part. So now the next thing on the list is uh, glass. Uh, we all know how glass is a big thing when it comes to uh, procuring it because the solar glass is not that much available in US. I don't think there is any company who is able to say that we manufacture a glass in US. So that's the other piece of the puzzle which is being looked into. Um, and glass, then junction boxes, then you have this, um, uh, the, <clears throat> the different components of the solution part, right? Like the micro inverters, the racking solutions and everything. So uh, each and everything is being looked into and Q cells, like we are happy to partner with different companies with we, with whom we work with on daily basis, to see if they have the plans and we can support them in any way, or if they don't have the plans, then if there can be a collaborative effort which can come into place or something. And as as I have been mentioning, we are very much committed to the U.S. U.S. folks, U.S. market, and very much aligned with our current U.S. president's vision. So I am very confident that we will be successful in getting some portion of our manufacturing back in the States for solar. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And I mean, everything I'm hearing you say, Harsh, I mean, you're talking about U.S. manufacturing, you're talking about U.S. supply chain. You know, that was a big issue for us over the last four years, you know, to have a supply chain that's close to home, uh, U.S. jobs. I'm hearing a lot about quality, which, you know, as installers, we always assume that modules are going to be high quality. We don't have a lot of issues with modules, but when you have them, they're really difficult. So that, that's yeah. that's critical. That's really important. And what we don't know as an installer is how are our modules going to going to do 10 years down the road? Because, you know, we've 20 years down the road, we've only been in business for about 15 years. So to hear about quality is really good. One other thing I'd like to touch on yet is just sustainability. Um, so just talk about that a little bit. It's, it's, sustainability, any environmental concerns. Um, I mean, we hear all kinds of things. There's all kinds of stuff out there in the internet that, that uh, you know, that solar panels contain products that are bad for the environment. So just, just touch on sustainability just a bit. Yeah, so, I mean, for a solar manufacturer, sustainability has to be as the, one of the key core values of the company. And, so is the case with Q-Cells. Uh, we do have many sustainability efforts going all around at this point. Uh, one of the things I would like to mention is uh, not everyone has yet heard about the term called as EPEAT. Uh, EPEAT is an eco-label which we are right now pursuing for a few of our products like key products lines. So by the end of this year, we will be able to announce few of our products get the EP eco label. So what does that mean when it when we say that hey our products will be EP certified? What honestly, as a very simple terms, it means that the product has been certified to be recycled as a prop in a proper way as the electronic waste should be. So many of the electronics manufacturers like Samsung or anything, uh, anyone big out there, Samsung, Apple, anyone, everyone has to go through this EPIT eco-label part 
in the solar industry, even though we are somehow the electronics uh, in the electronics world, this has not been that much around yet. We are trying to work on that so that way we are also showing our customers how much we are committed to the sustainability part of it. As one portion of the EPT eco label, one of the things you need to look into is the life cycle assessment of it. And during the life cycle assessment, you are basically looking into the greenhouse emission gases. And that's the key part when it comes to understanding how much you are like, okay, you are making a product which will create the green energy or the clean energy. But while making the product, how much are you emitting carbon to the environment? Mm -hmm. That's the question everyone needs to understand because if you are if you are basically throwing out a lot in the air of harmful substances, then the output is not making sense. Right? So <clears throat> uh, that's the beauty about this EPIT. When you are doing it, you are basically going through so many different small details to understand how much harmful your entire manufacturing process is to the world. And it's a good thing that we are doing it. I'm not saying we are perfect by any ways. Mm -hmm. There are always things and room for improvement, but at least it is a first step in the right direction we are taking right now to understand how where we lie uh, and how far we have to go. Because obviously it's a journey. As, as, as we have been saying, it's not like you are making a perfect product out there mm -hmm. with perfect processes. If you were perfect, then why would there be so many other things going around? Yeah. So <clears throat> the EP part, uh, and then also along with that, we are part of the ultra low Alliance carbon group. Q cells is one of the founding, founding member of it. So uh, with that combined with the different uh, sustainability efforts, which our awesome sustainability director has been doing from day in, day out in different parts of our uh, company is uh, making a long way forward. And we are also looking into, uh, when it comes to sustainability, you also want to look into the reusability, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the, the whole concept of circular economy comes into the place. So right now, U.S. ecosystem is what QSELS is building. But the QCell's vision from the sustainability standpoint is to become or be part of the circular economy. And what that means is the product which has been used and served its lifespan now needs to be properly or gets properly recycled. And in an ideal world, that properly recycled product, you are able to extract the raw materials and those raw materials are used to make the product in the same industry. So right now, you do have the recycling efforts going around and QCells recently announced the partnership with SolarCycle, mm -hmm. um, which we all would have, uh, which we all were excited. I was part of one of the parts of discussing that and getting it to the level it has been now. And one of the things why we believe in solar cycle is they are also having the same vision as us to create this circular economy. The more we are able to extract the raw material in its usable form and put it back in the solar industry, the more sustainable this whole process will be. Mm -hmm. And that's how uh, this whole thing is coming into play. Right now, the vision is there. We are executing it. Let's see how far we can take it. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's really exciting to hear, Harsh, because I know that there's there's a fair amount of concern, and some of our customers have this concern. You know, there's a lot of utility scale projects going in, gigawatts, thousands of modules. What happens in ten years, twenty years, fifty years down the road? Do these modules all end up in a landfill? And if that happens, you know, we've, we're really creating a major problem for exactly the next generation. Uh, to, to recycle, you know, to, to get rid of these products. So if we can find a way to recycle them um, and, and talk a little more about Solar Cycle, what, what do they do or, or what's the partnership with you look like? Yeah, so Solar Cycle is a very, um, I would say uh, they are right now becoming a lead 
recycling company in the US. Uh, they are on the path to become the leading recycling uh, company in the US. The entire vision for Solar Cycle is they are wanting to take the raw material, take the solar panels, analyze them, and see if there is any more lifespan left out of it. Uh, if not, then recycle it in a form that you are able to extract glass and uh, the aluminum frames and the uh, different raw materials like uh, liquid and everything from them. Uh, and then once you have recycled and got these raw materials, you basically use it to manufacture it in the sizes which the solar manufacturers, PV manufacturers can use. And once that sizes are available with the high quality product, you can then use it for the final product delivery. So the the vision is making for great sense to us in QCells. And hence we have proudly announced that Solar Cycle is our recycling partner. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, well, thanks, Harsh. That's that's uh, that's very good to hear. I mean, I think what I'm hearing from you today is a lot about, obviously, the U.S. supply chain and manufacturing, a lot about quality. I mean, that's I think that's a big part of what we're what we're looking at today, and then also sustainability. So that's that's excellent, and those are three reasons, in my opinion, why Q Cells is really the the premier brand of solar panels here in the U.S. Um, is there anything we missed that you want to talk about, Harsh, or any questions that you have for me? Anything else we should touch on here today? <clears throat> uh, thank you for the great time I had to talk with you. I do have one of the questions and one or two of the questions if, uh, which I do want to touch base with you. And Paradise, as you have mentioned, Paradise has been around for 10, 15 years. You have also been in the industry for that long. How do you see the industry has progressed in your time frame? Like I have not been in the industry for that long. For me, it has been just five years or so. But even for me, it's like it's changed so much. So I would like to hear from you, like how it has changed over the years and what do you think is the current market demand and the future market demand looking like, if you can help me understand that and all of yes. this. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question. You know, as I think about, so I've been in the industry for 15 years. It's come up on 15 years here, another month or so. Paradise Energy has been around for a little bit longer than that, about 15 and a half years. Um, I would say, you know, the biggest changes are, you know, software is one massive change. Like we used to like back of the napkin, you know, add stuff up, you know, use PV watts for production. We didn't take into account clipping and, you know, the, the a lot of the design parameters um, that's a huge one. The technology, I mean, you mentioned, you know, modules at that time, I think we had like 180 watt modules or 200 watt modules and they were like $3 a watt, you know, and today, yeah. you know, everybody, you know, they've, they've gotten three times more watts and dropped like, you know, 80, 90% in cost. Yeah. So that's to me, the module is probably the biggest gain. Um, yeah, there's been improvements with inverters, with efficiency, uh, with shade mitigation, with monitoring. That's another huge one. You know, at the beginning, we weren't monitoring our systems. We were just putting them out there. These things are supposed to last forever. You know, yeah. we all know that that doesn't happen. It's electronics. Things things break. You know, things do happen. Um, so I think those are the biggest things that I think about. The, the evolution of the module, monitoring of PV systems, <clears throat> and then, you know, just the, the software that's available, the tools that are available. And, and I think that's really what excites me about the industry in the future. You know, we're gonna face some challenges. Um, you know, we, we always have, we faced challenges mm -hmm. before. There's gonna be high demand for, there's probably not gonna be enough US manufacturing for a time. But I think that the industry is resilient, lots of good tools, lots of good companies that are in the industry. And, and we're gonna make, you know, find a way to make it go. Yeah, that's an excellent way of putting it. Uh, yeah, I've heard this from many of the industry stalwarts that how the module sizes, the wattages, and the pricing has changed over the years. And yeah, it's it's uh, crazy how, uh, like, what crazy is a way too big of a word, but it's just uh, intriguing to hear the journey throughout. Um, <clears throat> 
also uh, you have touched based on like how the us manufacturing is important for the people uh, i also wanted to touch base on like how much like yes we are creating this uh, we are trying to be self reliant when we are installing the solar panels on our roofs or on our commercial systems and everything and so you want to like consume just the energy you are producing and everything but there are many times when you are creating excess energy or you are in the need of utilizing the excess energy uh, how do you think this whole energy storage concept is coming into play uh, over the years now and how it will be even more critical as you go forward yeah yeah i mean when when energy storage came out you know when it first started coming out in a big way which was maybe i don't know is that five years ago that might be longer than that it might be six or seven years ago we kind of laughed at it because it's like really like we're going to spend you know 20 30 50 000 depending on how big your your battery system is and you're going to get what like you can net meter why, why do you need batteries you know it's just for backup backing up a few loads but that's all changed and, and we saw it in California in the, just in the last year, year and a half. Um, and we're going to see it everywhere at some point. We're going to see it here in Pennsylvania. I mean, th there's no rumblings of it yet, but we're going to see it in the next five years, three years, yeah. years. We're going to see it everywhere. So I think it just makes sense. Um, customers are going to push back. Uh, you know, not every customer is going to be excited about it until it's just required for your payback or you have to do it to install a system, but that's going to happen. And I think that's a critical step harsh because right now we're pushing a lot of power back out into the grid at the wrong time. And utilities don't like that and I understand why. So we have to find a way for solar and utilities to, to get along and work together because, you know, it's going to be a long relationship and we have to figure out a way, a way to make it work. Yeah, very well put. Uh, solar production and the utility have to go hand in hand. Otherwise, Absolutely. this whole goal of becoming self-reliant is, uh, I, I'm not sure uh, how we can achieve it in a smoother way. Yep, yep. It's, it's, it's got to happen. It's got to happen, yes. Yep. Uh, that will be all from my side. Thank you for this exciting uh, yeah, podcast session. Yep. Thank you, Harsh. I'm really excited to hear and see what QCells is coming out with. I'm crossing my fingers. I want to hear about domestic content sooner sure. rather than later. So we'll keep wait, you know, wait for the government. And then once they have it, we'll we'll figure out a way to make that work. And I'm just excited to uh, to work with you guys and uh, and to see what all you have coming down the pike. So yeah, same same here. We all are excited uh, to hear that and how we how this progresses further. And for sure, looking forward to more collaborative work together in future. Excellent. Harsh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me.